This is where you wanna be. It's everything you ever want. It's everything you ever need. I'm just sitting in front of you. All right, I don't know about you fourth graders, but there is nothing like a good pump up jam to get me ready for a test. And don't get mad at me. Don't be like, Mrs. Lawson, a test. Okay, no, tests aren't like that. It's nothing to get upset about, nothing to get freaked out about. Guys, I look at tests as a way to show what you know, to show that, hey, I'm getting this, Mrs. Lawson. I am killing it, and this is why. Um, I think tests are great because you can show us all that's going on up there in your brain. So be kind to yourself. And if things get hard, that is okay. So let me get my, oh my goodness, I have not even shared my screen with you yet. So that would be a good starting point. So as you already know, my name is Mrs. Lawson. I am one of your fourth grade teachers. And we are going to go ahead and hop into this. We are finishing up Skeletons Inside and Out. What an amazing story. I learned so much. And again, like I said, we're just showing what we know. It's going to get hard. And we know all about this learning pit, hopefully, by now. So it's okay to go in the pit. It's okay for things to get hard. For good learners, it's not always going to be easy. Things are going to get tough and you just need to persevere, use those strategies that we already know to get you up and out of that pit, guys. You've got this. So our learning intentions today is, we are learning to demonstrate our understanding of a text on an assessment. How are we gonna be successful today? Well, there's a few parts of this test that we're gonna look at so that you feel confident going into this and saying, I already know everything that I need to know, Mrs. Lawson. You're going to identify the main idea of a text, you're gonna identify a key detail that supports the main idea. Then you're gonna to have to refer back to details in the text to answer questions. And you're gonna to have to identify the structure of a text. So let's hop right in. You also have a part of the test that goes over foundational skills. So the directions are gonna be something like this. Read the question and choose the correct suffix to form the word write the word. So you're gonna have to choose between ist, if, and this. And hopefully you guys remember what these mean already. Do you remember if you add ist to a word, what that changes the meaning to? Is it a person who, likely to, or a state or quality of? Good job, fourth graders. It means a person who. So down here, when we have a scientist, it's a person who studies science. Now what about if? So like creative, right? It's likely to. So if you're being creative, it means you're likely to create something. Now what about shyness? So this ness, right? You guys are so smart. You've obviously been able to take away, well, we've used a person who, we've used likely to. It's the state of being or quality of being. So right now, I am feeling shy. I don't wanna talk, so I'm, I'm feeling shy in this moment. Might not mean you're shy all the time, but right now you're shy. A good example might be if you're meeting new people, you might not talk as much as you normally do, so you're feeling, you have shyness right then but most of the time you might talk a lot. So it doesn't mean you're shy all the time. All right, guys. So there is a part of the test also that goes over some vocabulary. And I know that we've gone over this, but it was always nice to see what it would look like on a test. So this is an old test. I'm not giving you the answers. I know, wouldn't that be great? But you guys have got this. It says the wind and water broke the cliffs open and fossils that had been buried were now exposed. So we know that this is underlined. This is the underlined. This is the word that we're focusing on. So what does the word exposed mean in this sentence? So if you don't know what it means, I like to look at all my options. Is it visible, 
broken, lost, protected. So I'm gonna give you a second. What do you think it is? Okay, so let's just say I think that the word means lost. I think it's C. That's what my, my brain thinks. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna try and put it back in that sentence. The wind and water broke the cliffs open and fossils that had been buried were now lost. Does that make sense? Doesn't make a lot of sense to me, so maybe I'll try a different one. What about A? The wind and water broke the cliffs open and fossils that had been buried were now visible. That could work. They were, at one point they were covered and now they're visible. I can see them. So if you ever get stuck, you can go through and put this word, this option in instead of whatever word's already in there. So for me, A would be my answer because that made sense. Now this is where sometimes people get a little stuck. Let's go to number two. Add a prefix to the word, word part pose to generate a new word. Now that may seem tricky, but all you're doing is taking this pose and a prefix means you're putting it at the beginning. So we're gonna put, do we know these words unpose? Never heard of that word before. What about compose? Compose, that sounds like a word I might know. What about in pose? In pose. And you know, if I get stuck, I could always write it out too. I could put un pose. I don't think that's a word. Compose. That might look right. In pose. I spelled that wrong. Hmm. When I look at that, one word sticks out to me that might be a word, and I think it's compose. So that would be what I choose. So hopefully, looking at that. Now you feel a little more confident going into the vocabulary section. Just remember those different tricks if you get stuck. All right, we're looking at the main idea. So what is the main idea of this text? So if we're looking here, we got really lucky. Sometimes those um, up here, these headings help us, but we don't always get that. So let's just read this paragraph together and see, can we figure out what the main idea is? Most kinds of fish have endoskeletons made of bone. The skeleton of a fish is simple with a skull. So I'm looking at a skull, a spine, so we got the spine and ribs. The fish's sleek shape helps it move quickly through the water. Muscles pull on each side of the spine, bending the fish's body and tail from side to side, pushing it forward. Fen bones help the fish balance, steer, and move along. So you're about to get some multiple choice questions because that's how the test is made. But what I want you to think of is don't get tricked. If you see something that's from the text, don't immediately think that's the right answer. The main idea is something that the entire paragraph focuses on. So let's look at our options. A, the skeleton of a fish is simple. B, the fish's sleek shape helps it move quickly through the water. C, most fish have endoskeletons made of bone. D, fin bones help the fish balance. So I'm gonna give you a second, which one sticks out to you that you think that entire paragraph was about? Okay, and one of my best strategies is I like to take ones away that I don't think are right. So is this whole paragraph about the simple skeleton of fish? No, because it tells me in detail about the different parts, so I don't think it's A. What about B? The fish's sleek shape helps it move quickly through the water. Is that what the whole paragraph's about? No, I don't think so. I think that's more of a supporting detail, so I could scratch that one off if I had my pen. Let me get it. So I'm gonna scratch that one off, and I'm gonna scratch that one off. Most fish have endoskeletons made of bones. If I think about it, that is what most of it is about. It's about the bones that are inside the fish's skin. So that could be it. Fin bones help the fish balance. It's the whole paragraph about just the fin bones. No, I don't think so. So just by going and taking away the answers we don't think are right, we could figure out that C is the best answer in the main idea. Now, once we figure out what the main idea is, that helps you with the next question because the main idea goes along with the supporting details. So we know the main idea is most fish have endoskeletons made of bone. Now, 
we need to figure out which key detail supports the main idea. So I didn't give you a list for this one because I want us to look back in the text and find what are some supporting details about the endoskeleton. Now take a few seconds and look back in the text and see if you can find some supporting details. So hopefully you're looking back in the text right now because that is a great skill for test taking. And now is a good time to pause that video if you need more time. All right, if you're back with me, what I what draws me to it is how is their skeleton made up? Well, right here it tells us they have that simple skeleton of just the skull, the spine, and the ribs. So that could be one supporting detail. Another one that we could talk about is um, that the muscles help hold the body from side to side, which makes it move. So it, it works together with the muscles, that simple skeleton. Then we could also talk about the fin bones um, that helps it balance and steer. So there's a lot of supporting details that help that main idea. All right, guys, this is something that you all should be able to do. They're gonna give you a question and you have to go back like the sleuths that you are and you gotta find that answer in the text. So any question that starts with according to the text, guys, that is a blaring red light that this is in the text. You just gotta go back and search for it. So it says, what are some parts of the body that are protected by bones? So which bones are they protected by? Give at least three examples. So they're not just saying, tell me, oh, the ribs protect something. No, they want us to tell what is the ribs or what are the ribs protecting. So let's look back in the text. Pause that video here, guys. I have to tell you, make sure you're really pausing when I'm asking you to and searching because it's really going to help you on this test. All right, guys, if you're back, let's see if what you found match what I found. So it says here, this whole thing right here is gonna be about what are your bones, what your bones protect. So this is the best place to go look. If I didn't give you this page, those headings will help you narrow down where in the text to look. So it says the ribs of the skeleton protect some of the body's most important organs. Ding, ding, ding. So the first thing you wanna talk about is the ribs protect what? They form a cage around the heart and lungs. So that is, answer to one thing right here. It says, which bones are they protected by? Give at least three different examples. So right now we know that the heart is protected by the ribs and the lungs are protected by the ribs. Now it also says the bones that make up the skull are some of the most important bones in your skeleton. The skull protects the brain. And there you go, there's another one. The brain is protected by the skull. So there are your three Examples and guys all you had to do was look back in that text. Now you guys can do it Okay, so this is something you've done a lot, but it might look a little different on the text. Don't get overwhelmed So the text is gonna the text the test is going to ask you what kind of structure the author uses in a certain paragraph and it's gonna want you to go look back now I put all the options the test might give you down here. So we have five options because I just wanted to go over what they were. So a description just means they're telling you about something. Cause and effect, we've done some lessons over. Um, it just means something has made something else happen. A comparison, you're taking two things and you're showing how they are alike. Problem and solution, there's some problem and you're showing how it can be solved. And then a sequence is when things are happening in a certain order. So let's look at this paragraph. I will read it to you and then we'll talk about it. The great white shark's spine is made of cartilage. It stretches from the tip of its tail to the base of its skull. Each fin has rods of firm but flexible cartilage which help it keep its shape. The fins help a shark dive through the water and change directions quickly. They also keep a shark from rolling over. First thing in my head, I just know that we're only talking about a shark, right? So I know we can't be comparing anything. So I immediately wanna say C is probably not our answer, right? 
then I want to think, what is the author doing here? Are they showing me a problem in some way that someone solved it? No, because no one's had to solve how a shark is formed, right? So I think that that's probably not the right answer either. So now that leaves me, are they telling us a series of events like in a story? Is this something happening in real life or? No, it's just telling us this is how a shark works. Is it telling us this happens so this happens? Not really. So my best answer is a description, A. It's describing to me the great white shark spine, how it's made of cartilage. It's telling me all about the great white shark and how its skeleton is made up. So hopefully that kind of shows you how I think through these questions because we have a few more that you guys are gonna do more of the work for and I'm just gonna be here to see what you're thinking. All right, text structure again. What kind of structure did the author use in this paragraph? So go ahead and read through it right now, pause this video, and see if you can figure it out on your own. All right, guys, you should have hopefully paused the video if you needed more time. What do you think? Are they just describing one thing? No, they're describing two things, right? We have the bats, and birds because even though a bat is a bird a bat is a mammal right share many of the same features as birds but they're saying why bats are different so this one even though it could be a little tricky you might be thinking description it really fits more with a comparison if you said description don't be discouraged though i totally see why you did it but think about comparison they're showing us here both have bones that are strong and light this is so they can easily lift their bodies off the ground. It really shows us how they are the same. So it would be more of a comparison than a description. All right, guys, we got two more, I think. Nope, this is our last one. So let's see how you do. What kind of structure did the author use in this paragraph? All right. Guys, I feel those brain waves coming in. You guys are working so hard and I love it. So often a frog species faces not just one threat, but many. What did you guys think? All right, hopefully most of you saw that it was cause and effect, right? It wasn't a problem that we can just solve, right? It was telling us down here that they're facing so many things and it's making them die. That is the effect. And what is making them die? It says down here, um, they're being killed by, so the pesticides being sprayed is the cause and it's affecting them to die. So it's cause and effect B. So hopefully we've seen an example of description. We've seen an example of cause and effect. We've seen an example of a comparison. You guys know what a problem is and what it looks like to solve it. And we've done so much sequence together. So you've seen a little bit of everything. And I'm so confident that you guys will do great at that part of the test. All right, just some quick reminders. Make sure you read that whole passage. Don't dis get discouraged. I like to chunk it up if you need to. I like to put my hand up and just do a little bit at a time or use a piece of paper so it doesn't look as hard and it just makes it not seem as difficult to me. So just read the whole thing, push through it, persevere. I know you can do it. Also use those strategies you've been learning. We've done so much together. Um, and you've got it. Read the questions and all of the answers. You might immediately think it's one, but there might be a better answer. So read all of the choices. Always look back in that text for evidence. We've done a lot of lessons about that. There's sometimes those answers are right there in the text to be found. Just go back and find them. Take your time. This is not a race. We just want to see what you know. So don't rush. Take your time and have confidence, guys. You've got this. You've been there. You've done the work. It's time for you to shine. Speaking of shining, there's that star there showing you, you, it's pointing you can do it. Great job, guys, and have a great rest of your day and rock this test.